Hello. You are listening to the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast. We are here to walk with parents on their unwanted journey of child loss, guiding them to a place of hope, light, and purpose, not in spite of their child's death, but as a way to honor his or her life. And now, here is your host, author, speaker, and bereaved parent, Laura Deal. Hi, thank you for joining me today. As we are all very well aware, this is the Christmas season. It's the Advent season. And for four Sundays, and so for during the four Sundays of Advent, I have been going live, reading that day's, that Sunday's reading from my book, Hope for the Future, an Advent Journey for Bereaved Parents. Now, what you're going to hear At the beginning here is the reading from Sunday night, and this is a recording of the live reading. So let's go ahead and listen to that. This week, it's week two, and as you saw by the heading, we're going to be talking about peace. Let's go ahead and start reading. I already have the green candle lit, as you can see. That was last week's candle. All around the world, horrible things are happening. Horrible things have happened since the first murder, when a jealous man murdered his own brother. I often wish God would have shared with us what it was like for Adam and Eve. Let me just pause here, but when you think about it, they didn't know what death was. Nobody had ever died. I mean, they knew when they ate that forbidden fruit that death entered the world, but you know, how do you comprehend death when nobody's ever died? And then to discover that your son killed your other son and caused the first death. I know sometimes we think that, and it does, it is, you know, the death of a child is out of order. We're supposed to die first, right? But when you think about the very first death in the Bible, it was a death that was out of order. It wasn't Adam and Eve. It was one of their children. And even worse than that, one of their children ended the life of another child. So I just, that's just crazy to me to think back then how hard it must have been for Adam and Eve to comprehend what was, what had happened. When the birth of Jesus was announced by the angels, they proclaimed peace on earth. God sent himself wrapped in a human body so that his peace could walk around on earth in a time of turmoil. The Jews were under Roman rule and the Romans were known for their cruelty. Peace is God's plan. Peace came as a gift in the manger. What happened to that gift? The same thing that happened to God's perfect peace when time began. Sin happened, selfishness, cruelty, lust for power, jealousy. But that does not keep God from continuing to offer his gift of peace. Just like I talked about the gift of hope, it is up to us to take it from him and unwrap it for ourselves. Now I'm going to go ahead and light the next candle here. And we're going to light the blue candle tonight. Blue is the color I chose to represent peace in our Advent journey as it is known to be a peaceful color. If we think about it, beautiful calm blue water can put our soul at rest. Looking up at a beautiful blue sky, night or day, can make us feel at peace. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. When our child dies, it feels impossible to ever feel God's peace again, but that isn't the case. God doesn't take his peace away from us. The enemy has stolen it from us, and sometimes we must fight to get it back. Paul talks about that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11, when he tells us to make every effort, some translations say to strive, to enter into the place of rest God has for us. The battle can be fierce, but it makes the victory that much sweeter. When that peace comes, it is so satisfying, so pure, so beyond what we can understand. One of our familiar Christmas songs says it well, and in despair, I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, 
goodwill toward men. But the song then goes on to say, then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. I said sometimes we have to fight to enter into a place of peace, but often for those of us who are so shattered and brokenhearted, quite often all we have to do is stop and rest and that peace will come. In other words, I can't make peace happen, but I can run into the arms of the one who can. When Jesus died, the temple of the curtain in the Holy of Holies was torn in two. That was so we could come to God's throne boldly and find help in our time of need. It was also so that God did not have to stay behind a curtain, but he could come out and love fully each individual he created. That is what I want you to take a moment and do right now. We're going to rest, not be angry, not fight, but rest in the arms and the presence of the one who loves you and wants to bring peace to your soul. God has blessed us with the gift of imagination. For some reason, we outgrow it as adults, usually because we're taught that it's childish. Let me just say, I'm going to pause here and just say, we still use our gift of imagination a lot. And if you're like me, I can use my gift of imagination for all kinds of bad things happening. You don't hear from your kid when you were supposed to hear from your child and your imagination starts running wild, right? Or maybe a parent or a spouse or somebody. You can just be laying in bed and your imagination starts running to bad things happening at work or whatever. You just start playing in your mind the wrong and difficult and hard things that can happen. Most of the time they don't happen, but we still use our imagination, but we don't use it in a good way that can help us and strengthen us. So that's just a side note here that I wanted to mention. I fully believe God wants us to use that gift of imagination that he's given us for our entire time here on earth. And I'm not talking about being guided by a spiritual being as those in the new age movement do, but to be childlike in our faith, allowing the Holy Spirit to help us use our imagination as a springboard for what he wants to show us or what he wants to do for us. Take a big breath as if you are breathing in his gift of peace. And as you breathe out, use your God-given imagination to picture stress leaving your body. Let's do that right now. Just breathe in God's peace and just picture, imagine, use God's gift of imagination, allowing your stress and your anxiety and your fears to leave. Breathe in peace and breathe out the heaviness. Do it again. And as you breathe in, ask the Lord to come into your wounded soul to be your Prince of Peace. And as you breathe out, Picture giving yourself him the heaviness and the anger. So let's take another big breath and you're going to picture, you're going to imagine, you're going to ask the Prince of Peace to just come and fill you. And then as you breathe out, picture yourself just bundling up that heaviness and the depression and the discouragement and all these things that come and picture yourself, use your imagination, God's gift that he's given you to hand those things to him. So let's do that right now. God, be my Prince of Peace. I need you. And I give you the heaviness, the worry, the stress. Prince of Peace, I thank you that you live inside us. You have the gift of peace for us that really does go beyond all understanding. Your word says, that your peace will guard our hearts and our minds. And Lord, we just stand on that. We ask that you would make good on that. And we'll do our part, Lord. Help us to do our part. That we will give you the heaviness and the things that pull us and weigh us down. 
We hand those, we give those to you in exchange for peace that will guard our hearts and our minds, Lord. And we thank you for that gift. We thank you for the gift of Jesus that came to make this possible. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hope that was helpful to you. I know those who are on with me live, they seem to say it was helpful to them. So I hope it has been to you as well. What I want to do now is since this podcast always comes out on a Tuesday, I thought I would read the Tuesday's reading for this week. If you have the book and you want to read along with me or you're doing it every day, maybe you're doing it in the evenings with uh, candles like I'm doing live, maybe you want to pause this and play this and let me read it to you as your daily reading. Otherwise, you know, I'm happy to just read this to you now. So this is day three, Tuesday of week two, still talking about peace. The enemy brings accusations and false blame. He causes chaos and confusion. It's almost like he's scrambling the frequency of what we need from God. So we have to find the dial and readjust the tuner. Peace is not something we just stumble upon in our turmoil. Psalm 34, 14 and 1 Peter 3, 11 both tell us to seek peace and pursue it. James 4, 8 tells us to draw near to God and he will draw near to us. It isn't that God has left us. It's that we can't feel his nearness right now in our darkness. The first instruction to us in that verse is to resist the devil. We are not resisting him when we remain in our anger and unforgiveness with God. Instead, we are adding fuel to the devil's fire. We know Job lost seven children all at once. He also lost all of his finances and he lost his health with having big oozing boils. His wife told him to just curse God and die. His friends kept insisting he must have done something wrong for God to do this to him. All Job could say is, I don't know why all of this has happened, but no matter how miserable I am, even if he kills me, I will trust him. That's in Job 13. That's my paraphrase. Now, something I'm just going to add in here that most of us don't realize is right after Job said this, he said, even if he kills me, I will trust him, but then at least I can argue my case to him face to face. <laughs> I think sometimes that's how we feel, right? If I die, I don't care. At least I'll see God face to face and he can give me some answers then, right? I want answers. That is an incredible trust in God, allowing God to be God and recognizing that there is no way our finite minds can make sense of it. If we could figure out and make sense of everything God does and allows, he wouldn't be big enough to be God anymore, would he? Think about that. If we could figure out God, he's not big enough to be God. I don't know about you, but I need God to be bigger than me and than what I can figure out and what makes sense to me. Now, if you're doing the candles with me, I'm going to go ahead and this is where we light the blue candle for tonight. We seem to believe if we let God off the hook, we won't have peace, but it is really just the opposite. I often picture a little child who was told no to something. That child starts to cry and throw a fit, sometimes hurting themselves in the process. The loving father steps in and scoops up the child who is now fighting him fiercely. Eventually, the child wears out and receives the loving embrace and comfort of the father. That is a pretty good picture of some of us, isn't it? Romans 14, 19 tells us to make every effort we can to do what leads to peace. And often that means simply submitting to the embrace of our loving Father, like Job tells us to do in Job twenty two eleven, to submit to God and be at peace with him. For some reason, many of us think that being a Christian is a golden ticket to not having anything bad happen to us for the rest of our time here on earth, but that just isn't the case. Jesus himself told us, in this world, you will have tribulation. He didn't say you might. He didn't say some people have it worse than others. He didn't say if you don't have enough faith, you'll have tribulation. He said, in this world, we are all going to have tribulation. 
we are going to deal with pain and suffering in this life because we live in a fallen, sinful world, which means we need to learn what God's Word has to say about it and how to deal with it so that when it comes, not if, but when, our faith isn't shattered and we fall apart and we blame God. Are you thinking it's too late because that's already happened? It is never too late to become firm in our trust in God to receive his peace. Matthew chapter 4 verses 24 and 25 is where Jesus talks about the house built on the rock and on the sand. There are many of us who thought we had built our lives on the rock, but when our child died, we discovered it was on the sand because everything came crashing down in a way that caused us to blame God instead of giving our suffocating darkness and pain over to Him to heal our broken, shattered hearts. Over the years, I have learned my faith is not in getting the answer I want to my prayer. That's not what faith is. My faith is knowing intimately the one to whom I pray. And the more I know Him, the more I trust Him. You may be shocked by that statement because you may feel like you trusted God and he betrayed you so you can never trust him again. But the truth is he is the source of hope and he is the source of peace no matter what has happened in our lives. And it isn't just true for me. It's true for thousands of parents who have lost their child from this earth over the years. God tells us in Psalm 29, 11, that he blesses his people with peace. And I think we can be very thankful that we are blessed because God has made a way through Jesus for us to have peace in the absolute worst storm possible. Jesus truly is the Prince of Peace, and he is in you, and he wants to release that peace in you and through you. GPS Hope will be celebrating our 10-year anniversary in 2024, and we want to start our time of celebration by inviting you to join us here in Wisconsin for a weekend of being ministered to as a bereaver, a bereaved parent. This is going to be a special time for bereaved parents to come together, like I said, be ministered to, and share our children with each other. Now, Dr. Doug and B.J. Jensen, who are bereavers and have experienced the suffocating darkness of child loss, their oldest son died by suicide and she's had a pregnancy loss. They will be joining us with their wonderful talents of drama and using American Sign Language as choreography to bring a measure of healing to our wounded souls that weekend. Now, the weekend will culminate on Saturday evening with what we are calling a celebration of hope. And this is where the friends of GPS Hope who have supported this ministry with prayers and encouragement and finances can all come join us for a special evening of celebrating GPS Hope's 10th anniversary. Now, along with a great dinner that night, we are going to rejoice in what God has done for the past 10 years and look ahead at the possible future for GPS Hope. And Doug and B.J. Jensen will be sharing with everyone during this time as well in drama and signing. Now, your registration fee for the weekend includes the Saturday night dinner and celebration. Now, the cost is there's an early bird price of only $75 a person or $125 a couple. And it is the first weekend in August, so Friday, August 2nd and Saturday, August 3rd. But there is more. If you want to come for more than just the weekend, some of you we've heard you might want to turn it into like a week vacation coming to Wisconsin. So we have some fun group events planned. We have something for every night of the week, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and then Friday morning. I'll just add Thursday night will be a casual cookout at our campsite at the Hope Mobile. And Friday morning, we'll have breakfast together, and then we're going to get started Friday afternoon. You can arrive at any point during the week and join in the activities for the days that you are there. Hopefully, you will consider coming. We would love to see and meet so many of you that weekend. So if you want to know more about it, just go to gpshope.org slash 
Weekend of Hope, and I will also put a link to that in the show notes. Let's go ahead with today's birthday segment. Sarah Jordan was born on December 11th and is forever 42. D.W. Grubbs was born on December 12th and is forever 27. Tyler Sitter was born on December 12th and is forever 32. Maria Elena Neverett was born on December 12th and is forever 55. Tanner Allen Harris was born on December 13th and is forever 20. Cameron Paddock was born on December 14th and is forever 22. David Paul French was born on December 16th and is forever 52. We celebrate the day these children came into the world. We know it will always be a special day for these families. If you would like to have your child's birthday announced to the other listeners and shared with everyone, I would love to be able to do that for you. All you have to do is go to gpshope.org slash birthdays. Just fill out that information. And there's also a place to put in the pronunciation of your child's name, first name or last name, if it gets mispronounced sometimes, because I do want to make sure I say it correctly for you. Just submit that information. And the week of his or her birthday, I will announce them in the birthday segment. I want to close out today's episode with reading something else. This is from the Reflections of Hope book, and it is just a little bit of December 5th entry. It says, I have found if my thoughts about Christmas are the decorations, the presents, the baking, the family gatherings and such, I can get in a slump, feeling the pain of Becca not being here, and can go right on into a depression. If my thoughts about Christmas are Jesus coming for the purpose of dying to bring peace into my despair, light into my darkness, hope into my hopelessness, and eternal restoration to those who are separated from me through an early death, then even within my pain, I know I can make it through. And so can you. So please remember to hold on. Pain eases, there is hope.